Right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with one of the stars of the new TLC. Is it a, what it called, be it called a biopic, a biopic? Biopic. Is biopic. it? But you'll hear yeah. people say biopic. I thought it was biopic and then someone biopic. corrected me. Yeah. It's bi- crazy, biopic. sexy, cool. It's crazy, sexy, cool. And I'm we have, so uh, excited. introduce yourself to the people. What's up? I'm Drew Sedora playing t Boz and Crazy, Sexy, Cool. It airs October 21st on VH1, so please tune in and watch. Listen. It's an amazing story. I got to watch it. Did you? Yeah, I got an advanced copy. And it was really, really good. I was a little skeptical because when we reported that it was happening, I was like, I don't know. Because, you know, TLC is such an iconic group, but I was like, I don't know how they're going to pull this off. And I was like, left eye, mm, little mama, I don't know. You guys really did your thing. Like, I really, I really enjoyed the film. And you really embodied T-Boss. Thank you. Yes. How, how was that process? Did you, how much was T, actual T-Boss involved in, in your character? Well, first, when I got the audition, um, I was actually in Chicago at the time. And I put myself on tape. I was like, thank you, technology, because I, I really wanted to do this. I wanted to take this opportunity. So because I wasn't in L.A., they allowed me to put myself on tape. So I'm literally, like, in the bathroom with my mom. <laughs> and I put, like, the white sheet up, and I'm taping myself. My mom is reading the other that's lines. That's good, that's good. And I got the part. Part off of that, um, the director Charles Stone, he um, he's actually from New York, and um, he agreed to Skype me as a callback. So we did like the callback on Skype, which never happens. So I learned like whatever's for you's for you, and like everybody has their own journey. But it was crazy. So I did at first rely on Google to really you know help me get prepared for the audition. And I found like T Boz and I were both from the Midwest, and then I found out we're both Taurus women. I was like, okay, we it's do, meant to we, be. Yeah, it's meant to be. <laughs> MTV is meant to be. And then I found you know she struggled with sickle cell. Mm-hmm. And I've been the spokesperson for uh, Sickle Cell Disease Association of Illinois for like eight years. Oh, wow. So that was very personal for me. And I felt it was important to bring that to the forefront of the film as well, you know, raise awareness. So I was just like, okay, I feel this. I can bring all that to the table. And then, of course, when I booked the part, I was like, man, T-Boz and Chili, they were very hands-on. So it was kind of scary at first, obviously, like the pressure of playing somebody that you looked up to and you were like a huge fan. Of course. I'm like, this is crazy. A um, little starstruck at times, like, this is is T-Boz but she was real down to earth and like she embraced me and let me pick her brain so I was able to really get those moments Cause because I, what I wanted to bring to the film was like Tion Watkins mm-hmm. the person we know who T-Boz is her persona but like those vulnerable moments that we didn't know or ever see yeah. So that was my challenge. Now, for I haven't seen the film. I've only seen the trailers. But talk to us about, like, what do we learn about TLC as viewers of this that we may not have known? Like, how deep does it really go? It's crazy. Like... We know, like, everybody who was fan of TLC, we love their music. You know, right. we knew a little bit of their struggle, but, like, really did not know their individual struggles behind the scenes of, like, t Boz And people would be shocked to see how much she was going through that you just didn't know. And then she hit the stage like nothing happened right. um, because they never played the victim. They never let us know as the fans. They just gave us everything that they had. And it was amazing to me that they touched the whole, like, people around the whole world and inspired people and were the number one best selling girl group of all time and yet they couldn't pay their rent like gonna, they had no money to yeah. show for it and I was like that's crazy that you can be that successful and so like money you know doesn't equate to success is what I also took from it too it was so just that crazy. in this in the in the movie does it walk through their relationship with Pebbles and getting oh. signed and oh yeah it, it goes actually before they were even TLC really yes like like, like there's they, a there's a point where they show Left Eye Little Mama showing how Left Eye was almost oh, she was homeless at one point right when she was out in the streets like rapping for money like she was that. homeless and yeah. it, it was real and I I didn't know that it was T Boss. And left eye at the beginning, and Chili was brought on afterwards. <laughs> like I thought, you know, it I was actually so another was girl. girl yeah. It was actually another girl. I won't get that away. It's actually another girl that was in the group originally that they even bring into the film too. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they go into it. Yeah. Now, um, for yourself, you're you're young, right? I mean, you play T Boz, but <laughs> who? How did that music affect you as a young person? Because you're a young lady, and that music, what, you were probably, what, 10 years old? I was, years old yeah, about that, out. almost almost 10. Um, it was crazy because, I mean, I love music. I'm, You know, I, I do music as well. I'm a recording artist, and so I was inspired by their music. And I was a tomboy growing up, so seeing girls that do music and then dress how they dress, I was like, man, I don't have to wear, like, you know, try to dress sexy. You could be sexy and wear clothes like that. That was the first time that I had ever seen women do 
that, especially at that time. And then they like talked about real women empowerment topics and their lyrical content was crazy. Bringing up safe sex, like nobody ever talked yeah, I was about say that. Wearing the condoms on their yeah, clothes, bringing and all that, that, was, that awareness. That was controversial at the time. I remember it was, that. but I remember to me, you know, I've always been. The, I'm the same thing. I'm a tomboy too. And when I was growing up, I was very like that too. And it was the first time I could connect right. to a strong girl group and be like, yo, if they could do it. I mean, I Aaliyah was it. popping, but Aaliyah did half half. You know, yeah. she was like she super sexy right. on top, but she had the baggy jeans Definitely. on the bottom. But yeah, that's that was my biggest connection to TLC. Definitely, me too. It was like, man, I can dress like this and do music and talk about things I feel because everything that they, you know, went through in life, like they put in their music. So, man, I was like, man, you could just talk about what you go through and use it as a form of therapy. And I remember hearing them talk about that as well. So they were just very empowering for young girls and women, I feel. Now, talk to us about you. You said you're an artist, a recording artist. Yeah. You, have, you have some family members here with you. Talk, I like, do. Who are you? Like, what's going uh, on? Where do you come from? I'm from Chicago. All right. So you kind of already probably know, like, what that's about um but we're very musical when you think of shaka khan I mean, well, yeah. you know I don't chicago's got a huge history <laughs> buddy <laughs> water but are, you know are, what you, are you but are you a singer is that i am I'm, I'm i'm signed i'm signed to slip and slide um out of based out of miami rick ross you know um yeah, and they're I'm, starting I'm okay. to go well. sebastian new artist Michael, out yeah. doing his thing um so they're going into moving into doing things in r&b and um a female first female artist coming out under that label so i've got a chance to work with lamb who works with missy elliott and um working with cajun right now and just man drummer boy like just blessed to work with a lot of great artists um and producers so working on my project now but in chicago i had a song with mario called for the love they got a lot of support from oh, back nice. home and was on um the step up uh album and i've been doing a lot of writing like at disney and things like that so too. you're a singer you're a songwriter yes you're an actress. an actress yeah and we're gonna see this comes out october 22nd so october right? 21st monday October 21st Actually, on monday so quick. then what do we see from you after this where's the next thing we're gonna see you drew um, well, I'm producing now. I'm getting behind the camera. I um, got a chance to team up with Dietrich Haddon and produce Blessing Curse. It's on DVD now, so you can cop that at Walmart <laughs> everywhere. Um, but it was a great, great inspirational story. We're getting ready to do Blessing Curse 2. So I'm looking forward to it. We're in pre-production for that. And then I have my foundation. I'm really trying to help Chicago. Um, it's a lot of violence going on. And I partnered up with Father Flager. We do a lot of peace work there, trying to you know reduce the violence in Chicago. Yeah, now, it's crazy in Chicago at, right now. No, Chicago's really crazy. I just saw a list of the top 10 most violent cities um, in the United States. Chicago's not even on the list, top 10. Um, which it's it, the way they do the numbers. It's based on uh, I think it's like you have to have a minimum of two thousand incidents uh, per one hundred thousand people or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. violence, you know, violent crimes ranges. It's not just gun violence. It's all different types right, of stuff. Right. But anyway, uh, you growing up, you're from the South Side. Yes, or, right. South Side. Audience. And now I'm told, and I've kind of walked through this with a number of people from Chicago just to get a better understanding, and so the people can understand it. When Cabrini Green got basically torn down, yeah. the people that lived there were dispersed to all different areas of town. Now, Very now true. Cabrini Green, was that like projects? Yeah, that was like yes. a huge, okay. I mean, blocks biggest. and blocks yeah. and blocks and, and blocks. And why blocks were they, and they torn down? Because mm -hmm. they wanted to turn them into, just like here in New York gotcha. City, they wanted to turn them into high rises. Exactly. And they wanted to use that real estate gentrification right. exactly. for people because it was prime real estate. So okay. they wanted to turn that around and make that tax dollars for the city to improve. So, exactly. Mm -hmm. Chicago gets, you know, in our world, especially black community, gets this rep of being a super violent place. You talk to white people in Chicago, they'd be like, Chicago's beautiful. Awesome. I don't know what everyone's talking about. Yes. Right? Yes. So uh, Chicago seems to be, a, one, a very segregated town. But two, the violence that's taken place is because these people were dispersed around and they were moved into different areas that didn't necessarily get along. Correct? Definitely. You're mm -hmm. so on point. You okay. Know. Exactly what's going and on. And because a lot of people also don't know that Chicago as a city has like old school gangs that's yeah. been around for a long time, yes. right? Yes. So that's kind of the complex thing. That is. I mean, our foundation, unfortunately, is just not the strongest. Um, I've gotten a chance to sit with Amina Ford, um, Jeff Ford's daughter. And I mean, really, the gangs, as how they were created, um, weren't intended to be as violent as they are now. Mm -hmm. We were really promoting to clean up our communities. Um, Which is probably the same not, premise as Crips and Bloods and Black Panthers exactly, kind of starting that same zone exactly. as well. Exactly. Yep. But now, because those leaders are gone, you know, they're kind of taking authority 
authority over certain blocks and it's, it's kind of domino effect and, and we d recently did a peace jam with Father Flager, Derek Rose, Jaquim Noah, a lot of Bulls players and four gangs agreed to come together for one day and play basketball and there would be no fights, no shooting and the Fruit of Islam did security and there was no fights, no oh, shooting. Wow. It was actually one day a piece and so we just did the second one and we sit down and we talk to them afterwards and you can easily say all oh, their halims or this and that but like you said they've been displaced number one number two there's no jobs yeah, there's no always, money in their community they're yes, food deserts yes. they can't get fresh fruit and vegetables so now you've got diabetes right. you know you've got all these different mental health issues um i just recently started my foundation dream makers that focuses on young women that are affected with mental health issues because no one's talking about that at all about their issues when they lose their father boyfriend husband son you yeah. know as you see little boys Teenage you know pregnancy. yeah and even and even so the trauma issues. the trauma is not addressed when you say mental health the trauma of living in a bad neighborhood and gunshots exactly. and police activity every day ad nauseum causes a level of trauma to young people that's kind of like not really dealt with in the hood and it's not even exactly. seen as like uh, it's almost like you live in a war zone, like no, a trauma no, of a kid who lives and in a lot of the kids Iraq are so or, young. Yeah, and, and so young, young, they just put up a safe passage route just so kids could get to school and back home safely. Like it actually is like signs that say safe passage, and then they have police officers escorting I mean, that's them. That's like some that's like some Gaza Strip Crazy. war zone straight. Like, yes, and I I also mm -hmm. I think the other piece of this that's not really. When you when you really dig into it and you start to get into how dependent the black community has always been on the government of the United States and not really a self-sufficient community. Right. We're always very welfare dependent. We're always looking for. And, and, and look, because we started off on in a bad circumstance of coming out of slavery and things like that. And I hate to bring that up, but <laughs> it's yeah. still fine. We're still financially and emotionally and are resource dependent on the government. And when you're resource dependent on a government, and as we sit here today and have this conversation, that's shut down or having their own financial problems, really what are you gonna get, right? It's getting worse already, you know? I mean, I get the numbers of shootings and murders and it's like, it's frustrating, but I've, I've really tried to look at the positive side of things, like okay, we have to just be more proactive. That's why I've been in Chicago and I've been present there, mm -hmm. because when I sit there and I talk to them, it's a lot of, like, I don't care if I change one person you know when I see young men that is just shooting and we're able to take a gun out their hand and talk to them like why are you shooting you're nine years old why yeah. you have a gun in your hand what's going on and you're able to have a conversation they feel like well nobody cares you know a lot of people that have blown up from Chicago they don't come back to Chicago they get away from Chicago so I've chose to go back and be right there I'm doing my kickoff November 9th in Roseland at the Roseland Reform Church I'm going to Roseland and I'm doing my kickoff there and that's like the community that you don't go to and I'm going there I walked the streets with Father Flager on 79th Street and do so, you do you extend an invite to a Kanye West and a Jennifer Hudson and I don't know, you, I'm sure Derek Rose I hear Derek Rose is pretty active. He's very active and I hear about them doing things but I don't know he was what, affected you know because his brother was a victim of that right. so he's got a personal and so he's very active like anything you ask him to do he is present um, you know we're going to continue to reach out to people definitely because I, I know that having people of celebrity status and that I feel it has an impact and if they feel like we can come and be an example. I look at Miami, I look at Atlanta, I look at New York and Cali. Like those people stayed. If Jermaine Dupri didn't stay in Atlanta and open his door, those artists couldn't come and get that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we need to set up shop in Chicago and open our door and let those artists coming through know like this is the way you got to do it and be more business minded you, and teach them. Now, that. do you feel that the that the city of Chicago, the the infrastructure there, because I do hear that Chicago can be very racist. Do you feel like the police? And the people who run that town are also supportive of what you're saying. <laughs> You know, it's like I stay in my lane, like I'm all about resources, um, but then you do have to address, which I know there's a lot of meetings taking place with politicians, that they are trying to set up a different protocol with the CPD too, because it's gotta all, you gotta have laws gotta enforced. You gotta all work together. The root of the issue, obviously, are laws. You know, certain laws have to be changed, setting up curfews to go after the ones that you just can't change, because there's mm -hmm. some people that you just can't help, well, and, that's and what you have I, to accept And that's that. the other part yeah. too, is there's a lot of people, like we hear about violence in Chicago, Chicago and people uh, uh, living in areas where this violence is taking place, unfortunately, a lot of the time, the people committing crimes are criminals. Right. 
And we sometimes look at them like, oh, they're they're young or they're this, but they're opting to commit a crime. Not everyone that is young and black in Chicago wants to be a criminal. Exactly. And but exactly. they have to live in areas, unfortunately, or have been uh, uh, unfortunate to live in areas that crime is happening so they're affected by whatever that crime oh, is. Oh man, there was just a young kid that straight A honor roll student wanted to become a doctor and he was getting approached by some gang members and he felt threatened so he took a gun to school to protect himself and now he's in jail. So you've got that because of where you live now you have to turn to that the weapon in order to protect yourself but then it's still against the law so you go to jail. So what do yeah. you do? So you know it's that's why I say laws like it has to be certain laws that the people you can't change are the ones going away you're not locking up people that really just don't have it to give to their children and they want help but, so you gotta really set it up to different laws you, to get but i'm gonna challenge you because when the authorities and the people roll in because i've seen it happen in yeah. la i've seen it happen in oakland i've seen it happen in areas in, in um new york when the police roll in and they not fucking with you no more they tired of playing these games the community's not really ready to see those young men get rolled up off the street that have been standing there for every day for the last however many years selling drugs, terrorizing their own communities. Mothers then will be like, that's my son. And everybody's like, but why has your son been out here doing X, Y, Z? Your son is a criminal. Yeah. People are not prepared to see that part. And right? this is true because I've even experienced that growing yeah. up in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I, my mother's from mid-city Los Angeles. So when I grew up in the 90s, it was tough. The same thing, drugs and gangs. It was beyond. But that was one of the biggest issues is that these same drug dealers, these same, the same these gang brothers. bangers. These are sons. Somebody's these son, somebody's husband. brother. And it was, it, it was like... As much as we wanted to clean up these streets, the same mothers didn't want to, you know, accept the fact that these are the children. Well, I feel like it's this, and I feel like, you know, there's 5% of those that are just not going to want to change. And they've yeah. been doing this for a long time, but I feel the issue is when you're locking these people up and then you see them back on the street, and then you see them go away and then you see them come back to the on the street. I think that's the confusion to where they start to look at the police like what? I don't respect you because you see somebody murder someone and they go away. And I know murderers that's out on the street. They back out. I know people that get caught with something a little less and they're gone for life. So I think that's why I say the laws. But if you know that there's only five percent of those that are gone and they don't keep coming back, that that sends a message of confusion that they're like, if I can do this and I'll go away a little bit, but I'll come home. But I'll come back. I think that's the mentality that we've kind kind of subconsciously, you know, accepted and been trained and to I, accept And I'll that. throw this in here too so. for us, man. The materialism of our community is the Versace, the Jordan, the all of these brands that we chase down, the watches, the Louis Vuitton, the Gucci, that we chase <laughs> prompts young men who want to look fly and flashy and impress women, young women who want a dude that looks a certain way and drives a certain way, prompts young people to make decisions. I know kids. I mean, when I was growing up, kids was like, yo, man, I want fresh clothes. Yeah, of course. I'm going to do what I got to do to be fresh, to meet a girl, to feel good about myself. By all means, But that level too. of materialism prompts these young people to, do, to commit crimes. Yes. Right? And we have to take responsibility for our actions. Like, yes. that's something that cannot be swept under the rug. Like, there are things that we do, that we promote, Hot 97, the music we play, the things we like in the club, the lifestyle we like, you know, that prompts some crime. Mm. And we gotta address that, too. We do, and that's why I'm just, I'm happy about this movie because it really is truly inspiration because it's real, it's a real, real story. Life, it's a real struggle. That these girls, like, people look up to them, they were so successful but yet didn't have money. So that just goes to show you that money isn't everything. Like, and then because they stayed persistent and determined and stayed on put path. Put in the work. Put in, put the in work. that work. Mm -hmm. Oh, put my God. The they is good now. They are good now. Trust and believe they're executive producing the project. They got a new album, a new New deal they're touring like they get the money so it comes it comes when you follow on that path and put in the work like you said you so gotta, and, that, and that's another piece of it too that always comes up the amount of time it takes mm -hmm. to go from point a to point b and especially be. in the movie it was a, the biggest thing to me is the lack of education of these girls it was a dream but the music business is a business and they they right. signed these contracts that had them so tied up 
And that's a, that was one of the biggest things to me is just educating yourself. If this is what you want to do, you have to know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And I into. think that they taught us that. Yeah. Like, I think knowing that story, like, taught us that. Like I said, like, now artists are more business-minded going, I don't want to be like that, so let yeah. me read this. Let me get a lawyer. Oh, I can get my own label? Okay. You know, it smartened us up, so I think we got to constantly, like, become innovative and even push forward so to knowing that we can now not only have our own label, we can have real estate, too. We can open up another business. We can be entrepreneurs entrepreneurs we can have clothing like like it's endless so education first like let's put in the work and they've been 20 years in the game 20 years later they coming back still doing it how many people and artists can say that they've even had that type of um you know skin in the game for 20 years so Very 20 true. years i mean i haven't been doing it for 20 years so i got a lot to go when is the movie premiere again october 21st which is monday which is in a couple days crazy crazy sexy cool crazy sexy and then cool. after that we looking for more from you Yes, please. Producing, I got music, slip and slide. Please, I'm working on my album right now. And um, just a lot of opportunity. You know how it is. Please keep in tune with me, Drew, at Drew Sedora on Twitter. My Instagram, at Drew Sedora official um, page. So I can keep, you know, everybody up to date on what I'm doing. That's what's up. Thanks nice. for coming by. Thank you. All right.